What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to run Fallout 4 on your Android phone or tablet. This is not cloud gaming, this is not game streaming, so I'm not using GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud Gaming, nor am I using something like Moonlight or Steam Link to stream it from a local PC. This is actually being run inside of Android using an application known as WinLater. And basically what we're doing here is emulating x86 PC games. In this case, Fallout 4, and recently on the channel, I posted a tutorial showing you how to run Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, but obviously this is much newer, and this is one that I was really excited about. First device you saw was the Red Magic 8 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Now we've got the Odin 2, same thing, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Unfortunately, with WinLater and the GPU drivers, I'm not able to get any of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 devices up and running that I have. But as soon as a new version is available that works on those devices, I want to showcase that because I think we can get much better performance. But either way, on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, you can run Fallout 4 at around 30 to 40 FPS, depending on what device you have it on. And finally here, we've got the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. Now, in order to get this up and running, there are a few things to note. Controller will be really nice. It'll work with wired controllers. It'll work with wireless controllers. But I'd say the most important thing here is getting the correct game files. And for this, I'm using the GOG version of Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition because it's DRM free and there is an offline installer that we can download through GOG Galaxy. Theoretically, this will also work with repacks of Fallout 4, but I'm using that GOG version just because it's really easy to access. Now, if you're interested in getting this up and running, first thing we need to do is get our game files transferred over to our Android device. And for that, we're gonna be moving over to my Windows PC. So again, first thing we need to do is get the Fallout 4 installer. I'm gonna be using the Fallout 4 game of the year from GOG. You can use a repack if you want to, but I highly recommend just picking it up. It's not that expensive. And the reason we're using the GOG version is because we get an offline installer with this, all of the GOG games are DRM free. So instead of installing Fallout 4 like you normally would, just hit install here on your PC, we're actually gonna go to extras. And right here we have the offline backup installer, Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. 32 gigs. We'll download this. Once it's finished, it's gonna be located in our GOG games directory. So on my C drive, program files, x86, GOG Galaxy, games. Fallout 4 Game of the Year, and it's going to be in the Downloads folder. As you can see here, several parts we need to work with, so we will need to transfer all of this over. And it's an offline installer, so it's going to make it really easy to get this set up on Android. I'm going to transfer these over to my Android device. I'm using the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 for this demo. So we'll snap my Galaxy Tab S9 over to the right-hand side. We've got our GOG Games directory right here. I'm just gonna put these in my downloads folder. And to make it easier, I would just create a new folder here and call it Fallout 4. So we'll take this, drop it right into that folder we created on our Android device, and let it finish transferring over. Once this is finished transferring over, we can now move over to our Android phone or tablet. And there's two more things I suggest transferring over to your Android device. I've actually created a Fallout 4 INI file. It's actually just a modified low settings with uh, some of those settings taken down even further to perform a little better. If you want to get this, you definitely can. It's up to you or you can modify that file yourself, but I've got it right here. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Just put it in my downloads folder on my Android device. And you also might want to transfer over your saves. So from your documents, if you played Fallout 4 on your PC, I'm gonna open this in a new window. My games, Fallout 4, saves. There's all your saves right here. We're just gonna take this whole folder, place it right in our downloads section. That way we've got our saves, we can pick up where we left off. Now I've got everything transferred over to my Android device. We're now gonna move over there and get everything set up. Okay, so now that we've got the game files transferred over to our device, just give you a look here. I'm using the built-in file browser. I put it in my downloads folder, and we've got that full installer right here. What we need to do next is download WinLater. We're gonna open up a browser, head over to the WinLater GitHub, link for this will be in the description. Highly recommend reading through everything here. There's a lot of great information. But basically, we wanna get the latest release, and at the time of making this video, it's WinLater 6.1. 
We're going to download the APK. Once we have that downloaded, we can install it. It's going to be in your download section. If you've never sideloaded an app on your Android device, you may be prompted to allow some storage permissions. But my system's already gone through the process. And what I'm going to do is just grab it. I'm going to put it on my home screen right here. And now we've got WinLater installed. We're going to launch it for the first time. It's going to download the system files that are required to run WinLater. And here we are. So the first thing we need to do is create a new container. In the top right hand corner, we've got this plus icon. And for each game I install on Android with this application, I usually just use a separate container. So I'm going to call this Fallout 4. Moving down a bit, we're going to change that screen size and I'm going to go to 1280 by 720, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Graphics driver, since I'm using a Snapdragon CPU, I'm going to keep it at that turnip driver. But for the DX wrapper, I want to change this to DXVK. I also want to show my FPS. Processor affinity, we can use all of our cores here. Now you can experiment with this if you want to, but I'm going to go with all the cores. Taking it down a bit. GPU name, 9800 GT. You can set it to a 1070 if you want to. I'm just going to go with that 9800. And we're going to change the video memory size to 4 gigs. Wind components, nothing much we need to change here. Environmental variables, we can leave at those stock settings. Drives, we're just going to be using the internal storage here. And advanced. Now, this could increase performance depending on your device, but I have run into some compatibility issues. Box 86 preset. Sometimes performance will give us, obviously, better performance. But for the most part, I've had much better luck on a lot of different devices using compatibility mode. So this is something you can also experiment with. You can go through and change these settings once we set this up. You can always come back here and change these settings for the container. So to recap, we named the container, changed the screen size, changed the DX wrapper, we've upped the RAM, and that's about it. Choose the plus icon to save that container. And now that we've got that configured, we can start it up. So our three little dots, we're going to run the container. So now we're running that newly created container and uh, we can navigate pretty easily here just using the touch screen. You could also plug in a mouse and keyboard if you want to. Down here, we've got our start menu. There's not a lot that we need to do from here. Basically, what we need to do with this new container is install Fallout 4. We've transferred the GOG version or the offline installer over to our Android device. So from our file browser, D drive is going to be our download section on our device. We'll open this up, dragging our cursor over, double tapping on the screen. And you can see this is our download section. We've got that WinLater APK that we downloaded and our Fallout 4 folder. We're going to enter our Fallout 4 folder. And we want to run the application at the very bottom here. Since I'm using the GOG offline installer, there's a couple different gestures that we can use here. Double tapping on the screen will automatically open this up. Or two finger single tap will bring up our options menu. We can just open right here. Give it a second to initialize. We can choose our language. I'm going to go with English. OK. And I'm just going to minimize this file browser in the background. You are about to start the installation for Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. We'll just agree and choose install. It's going to give us a progress bar, just like we're installing it in Windows. Give this some time to finish up. If you've got a really fast device with fast storage, it shouldn't take too long, about 10 minutes. If not, it could take a little while, up to around 30 minutes, depending on how slow your storage is in your device. But this will finish. It'll go through the process. And again, we've got that progress bar down here to keep an eye on. Now that the game is finished installing, we can start it up, and I would recommend at least starting it up once before we transfer our saves over and that INI file. It's going to bring us into the Fallout 4 launcher. From here, we can configure our graphic settings, but remember, if you want to use that modified INI, you can always kind of skip this step, but I just want to make sure everything boots up correctly for you. It might say, yeah, so it set it to low quality, but from options, 
Basically, on an Android device, you want to take everything down. We're at 1280 by 720 because that's what we have our container set at. We're going to go to low again, even though it automatically set it there. From advanced, there are some other settings here that we can change. But with that I and I, I've actually lowered some uh, shadow resolution and things like that. So this step can be skipped if you're just going to replace that. But we do need to start this up at least one time to get all of the files in the correct location. Choose OK. OK. And we'll start the game up for the first time. Like I mentioned at the beginning, having a controller is really going to help out, but there are on-screen touch controls. There's tutorials all over to find those. I'm just looking at the settings here. You can start up a new game right now if you want to, but if you want to transfer those saves over and that INI file to try to get a little better performance out of it, we can do that. So we'll exit the game. Now we can transfer our saves over and that INI file if you downloaded it. Again, it will help out a bit with performance. So from our file explorer, we're going to head to our D drive. We've got our save folder and we've also got that INI. So I'm just going to copy the INI first, two finger, one tap. We'll copy. Now we want to go to documents, my games, fallout four. And as you can see, we've got that fallout four prefs.ini. We're just going to paste over it. And of course we want our save files back to D. And we can just copy our full save folder here. Documents, My Games, Fallout 4, and we'll paste it right in here. Two finger, single tap, paste it in. Now we've got all of our PC save files, a little better performance. And before we start the game up again, there's one other thing I'd like to show you here. We can easily create a shortcut so we don't have to go into the container every time we want to launch Fallout 4. And to do this, we're going to go to our C drive, GOG Games. Fallout 4, Game of the Year. We're going to find the Fallout4.exe. Two finger, single tap. Create shortcut. And what this did was create a shortcut on our desktop, but it also created that shortcut in WinLater for us. We can back out of WinLater. Exit. Top left hand corner, hamburger menu, shortcuts. And now we've got our Fallout 4 shortcut right here. We can start this up and we don't have to load that container every time. I've got my Xbox controller connected to this tablet. We'll load one of those saves that we kind of transferred over. And right now my Galaxy Tab S9 is using some of that CPU and GPU to record the screen. Let's move into the real world. Overall, it's been a pretty fun experience running Fallout 4 and even Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas on my Android tablet and phones. Uh, one thing I'm really waiting for is that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 support. And then, you know, from there, with the more powerful CPUs hitting the market every year, we're going to see some awesome performance out of these devices while using something like WinLater. There are a few other applications on the market like MoBox that also allow you to do kind of the same thing, but WinLater does make it really easy with the super simple interface. It's just really user friendly and that's one of the main reasons I personally like using it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And another thing here is if you do any kind of configuration or tweaking with that INI file, find some settings that you can bring down that give you better performance. Let us know what you've changed down below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.